Tojo Hideki. The accused is charged under counts 1, 27, 29, 31, 32, 33, 36, 54 and 55. Tojo became Chief of Staff of the Kwantan Army in June 1937 and thereafter was associated with the conspirators as a principal in almost all of their activities. He planned and prepared for an attack on the USSR. He recommended a further onset on China in order to free the Japanese army from anxiety about its rear in the projected attack on the USSR. He helped to organize Manchuria as a base for that attack. Never at any time thereafter did he abandon the intention to launch such an attack if a favorable chance should occur. In May 1938, he was recalled from the field to become Vice Minister of War. In addition to that office, he held a great number of appointments so that he played an important part in almost all aspects of the mobilization of the Japanese people and economy for war. At this time, he opposed suggestions for a peace of compromise with China. He became Minister of War in July 1940, and thereafter his history is largely the history of the successive steps by which the conspirators planned and waged wars of aggression against Japan's neighbors. For he was a principal in the making of the plans and in the waging of the wars. He advocated and furthered the aims of the conspiracy with ability, resolution and persistency. He became Prime Minister in October 1941 and continued in that office until July 1944. For Japan's criminal attacks on her neighbours. In this trial he defended all these attacks with hardihood, alleging that they were legitimate measures of self-defence. We have already dealt fully with that plea. It is wholly unfounded. As to count 36, there is no evidence that Tojo occupied any official position which would render him responsible for the war in 1939 as charged in count 36. The tribunal finds Tojo guilty on counts 1, 27, 29, 31, 32 and 33 and not guilty on count 36. War Crimes Tojo was head of the war ministry which, which was charged with the care of prisoners of war and of civilian internees in the theatre of war and with the supply of billets, food, medicines and hospital facilities to them. He was head of the home ministry which was charged with a similar duty towards civilian internees in Japan. Above all, he was head of the government which was charged with the continuing responsibility for the care of prisoners and civilian internees. The barbarous treatment of prisoners and internees was well known to Tojo. He took all the Japanese army towards Chinese prisons of war. Since the Japanese government did not recognize the incident as a war, it was argued that the rules of war did not apply to the fighting and that Chinese captives were not entitled to the status and rights of prisoners of war. Tojo knew and did not disapprove of that shocking attitude. He bears responsibility for the instruction that prisoners who did not work should not eat. We have no doubt that his repeated insistence on this instruction conduced in large measure to the sick and wounded being driven to work and to the suffering and deaths which resulted. We have fully referred to the measures which were taken to prevent knowledge of the ill-treatment of prisoners reaching the outside world. Tojo bears responsibility for these measures. The tribunal finds Tojo guilty under count 54. We make no finding under count 55. The accused Umeju is charged under count 1, 27, 29, 31, 32, 36, 54 and 55. Umezu was an army officer. While he was in command of Japanese troops in North China from 1934 to 1936, he continued the Japanese aggression in that country against the northern provinces. He set up a pro-Japanese local government 
and under threat of force compel the Chinese to enter into the Ho Umezu Agreement of June 1935. This for a time limited the power of legitimate government of China. In December 1937, Tojo as Chief of Staff of the Kwantung Army sent to Umezu plans for preparation for attack for the attack on the USSR and later plans for the strengthening of the Kwantung Army and plans for installations in Inner Mongolia which Tojo stated were of vital importance both in the preparation for war with the USSR and in connection with the war with China. It is overwhelming that the accused was a member of the conspiracy. With reference to Count 36, the fighting at Nomenhan had begun before he took command of the Kwantung Army. He was in command only a very few days before the fighting ceased. Yumezu served as chief of the army general staff from July 1944 until the surrender. He thereby played a principal part in the waging of the war against China and the Western powers. War crimes. There is not sufficient evidence that Yumezu was responsible for the commission of atrocities. The tribunal finds Yumezu guilty on counts 1, 27, 29, 31 and 32. He is not guilty on counts 36, 54 and 55. Under the, char under the charter, the judgment I have read is the judgment of the tribunal. The member for India dissents from the majority judgment and has filed a statement of his reasons for such dissent. The members for France and the Netherlands dissent as to part only from the majority judgment and have filed statements of their reasons for such dissents. The member for the Philippines has filed a separate opinion concurring with the majority. Generally, I share the view of the majority as to the facts, but without recording any dissent, I have filed a brief statement of my reasons for upholding the Charter and the jurisdiction of the Tribunal and of some general considerations that influence me in deciding on the sentences. These documents will be part of the record and will be available to the Supreme Commander, to Defence Council and to others who may be concerned. Defence Council have applied for a reading in court of, of these separate opinions, but the Tribunal had already considered this matter and decided that they would not be so read. The tribunal adheres to this decision. The accused will be removed from the dock and then returned singly for sentence in the order in which their names appear in the title of the indictment. The three accused who are too ill to attend the trial today will be sentenced in their absence after those accused who are present have been sent. To enable the accused who are present to be presented for sentence in the order stated, we will adjourn for 15 minutes.